My fiancé decided to have fun before our wedding. My love life was good and full of happiness until it wasn't. I don't know if I was the one with a problem or love couldn't handle my happiness anymore. Have you ever felt like you were suffocating from what you are experiencing? If there is anyone who was once in my shoes, how did you deal with the ordeal? Did you leave everything as is or you took a decision that you thought was only best for you? I, am 28, grew up without parents, they died in a very tragic accident years ago. I was 14 when I was told about their tragic accident. So I was left with my big sister who is 5 years older than me. Who then took a role of being my parent at the age of 19. I was grateful for the funds my parents had left for us to further our studies and to be able to live till we could stand for ourselves. The funds that they had left for my education were enough to push me till I graduated in university. A couple of years later, my sister and I were on a vacation in Cape Town, South Africa, where I met my ex-fiancé, F25. I saw her in one of the restaurants, she was with her friend having lunch. My eyes couldn't stop looking at her, when my sister noticed the way I was looking at this perfect, caramel and natural lady. She laughed at me and told me to approach her. I didn't want to look forward and get rejected so I stayed back till they decided to leave. My sister forced me to go to her, my knees were shaking, and I didn't know how she was going to see me. I spotted them waiting for a ride. I took some breathing exercises before I went to where they were standing. I greeted and introduced myself and I asked for her numbers, she blankly refused with them. Her friend gave me her Instagram account handle and told me to check her there. Her IG account was private so I sent her a request to follow her which took the whole week to get accepted. During my school days, I was a nerd and focused more on my books. I didn't have time for girls but I had a childhood girlfriend, whom I started dating at the age of 13. We started chatting after a while, getting to know each other. I asked her out on a date but she rejected me and told me that she didn't trust strangers. I understood her fears because there was a lot of human trafficking happening all around the world. It was not easy to just trust a person especially from another country. My sister and I went back to the States but I kept communicating with her. We became friends, she was then comfortable enough to tell me anything. A couple of months went by, I was working for this big architectural firm in New York as a building planner and designer. I got a client that needed a building planner for his upcoming mall building project, it was a South African real estate and construction company. It was my first big project to get in Africa. Getting the project didn't only gain me connections but I also got a chance to meet with the lady who caught my eyes again, as her friend of course. She gave me a hard time when I asked her to be my girlfriend but at least she agreed to go on a date with me. That was progress right? She gave me a chance after three dates and came up with the, a 90 days rule before taking the next step. I respected her decision because it gave us time to get to know each other more. We dated through socials and calls for a couple of months. It was a bit hard because we were on different continents. We tried by all means to communicate with each other every day. The following year she got a filming scholarship from New York Film Academy. Things got a bit better for us and I got a chance to see her every day. After the, the 90 days rule was over, we took our relationship to the next level. I loved her so much. We shared our future goals and everything. She was a person who liked building communication and connections. She was fun, spoke her mind but down to earth and intelligent too. I asked her to move in with me three months after she had moved to the States. I proposed to her not so long after she had moved in. I was happy, I had everything I wanted and needed. What more would I have asked for? My lady was always natural and original in everything, no makeup, no wigs or fake whatever that those influencers do. She told me to loosen up and enjoy life, telling me that you only live once, enjoy life while you still can because you don't know what tomorrow holds. So let's enjoy ourselves while we still can. We then started going out a lot, exploring nightclubs in our free time. Time passed, she started going out alone a lot, saying she was going to study or she was going to do a project she won't be coming back and she would crash at a friend's house. I trusted her, her dedication to her schoolwork was amazing. 
Her everyday phrase was, I don't want you to marry someone who is not educated and broke, I want to be a rich career-driven wife and build our family's legacy together. She was full of enthusiasm and determination. To cut the story short, my sister organized an engagement party for us. They used to call me a nerd at school. My sister was the only friend I had. Till I got Jess, she changed everything. The party was intimate with only few of my colleagues, my fiancé's friends and family members. Things started changing after our engagement party. I noticed her behavior before our premarital party, she was always on her phone, chatting with whoever she was chatting with. That made me suspect that she was cheating because she had become distant. When I raised my concerns, she would brush me off and tell me that I was overthinking. I trusted her and I was certain that she wouldn't do anything that would jeopardize our relationship. Or would she? So one day we decided to stay indoors spending some quality time together, we had already started with wedding preparations. We were going through our gallery from the time we started dating. We still had to prepare for our premarital party later on. Jessica went to fetch some more snacks for us when her phone rang and a name Peter popped up. I told her that she had a call, she rushed in to drop it but I had already answered and put it on loudspeaker. The guy greeted and asked if she was ready to have some fun before she got off the market. She just dropped the call without answering the guy. The guy even called her beautiful. That made me suspicious of who this Peter guy was who called my woman beautiful and asked if she was ready to have fun before she got off the market. The day was ruined. I got curious and wanted to know more about this kind of fun the guy was talking about. I couldn't question her, my thoughts were racing. You know curiosity killed a cat. So I asked Jessica who this Peter guy was and what their relationship was. She told me that Peter was a friend whom she met in college and he was her project partner. I saw it through her that there was more than just being a friends from college and project partners. So I planned to bug her phone. I downloaded a tracking app that would track her phone's location but I had to first try and get her phone and search for any conversations. I couldn't get to the conclusion of being cheated on so I had to check their text conversations. I wanted to know who this guy was and what was really going on between them. I couldn't let insecurities ruin my plan and our premarital ceremony. So when Jessica was in the bathroom, I got a chance to take her phone and search for any tangible evidence that I would use to confront her. I found nothing, which meant she had either deleted all their conversations or they were communicating through phone calls only. Giving up without any evidence was not on the list so I continued with my tracking plan. I was in a mix of anxious, anticipation and hope that I would gather all the evidence I needed before jumping to conclusion. A moment later Jessica came down, looking good and ready to go. She had told me that she was going to her friend's house because she had planned a small bachelorette, for only her and a few ladies. I had to act like I didn't have any problem with that. I was anxious about the outcome of her plan so I switched on the tracking app on my phone. I wanted to know if she was really going to her friend's house, of which indeed she was. She didn't stay long at her friend's house, which made me more suspicious of where she was going because there was no way the bachelorette would have lasted less than an hour. I continued monitoring her phone's location. My emotions got high as I was waiting for the confirmation of my suspicions. The tracking app showed me that she was going to a hotel not far from where our premarital party would take place. My curiosity told me that she was meeting up with him. Why would she disrespect our day like that? I called my sister and told her that I would meet up with them at the venue a bit later. I drove to the same hotel Jessica had gone to and went to the hotel's restaurant and sat where there was a clear view to see everything. So I ordered a drink to pass time and 30 minutes later, I heard this guy talking to the reception lady. He introduced himself as Peter and was there for his girlfriend, Jessica Williams. The lady made a call before directing the guy to Jessica's room. I wasn't sure if he was talking about my Jessica, but there was only one Jessica Williams in the hotel. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, my fiancé would never be friends or book a room with the man who looked old enough to be her father. She respected herself or that's what I thought. Was this the same guy who she said was a friend from college and a project partner? Curiosity got the better of me, I had come up with a plan. 
I ordered a few beers, I was not going to do this sober so I had to be at least tipsy. I didn't know if I would handle the truth when I uncover it, or maybe I should have just let things be. If you were in my situation, what would you do? I prayed to find nothing that would jeopardize our relationship and ruin the night that was supposed to be our wedding night. I had to find a way to get into that room. An hour later I called my sister to come to the hotel not far from the venue where the premarital party was held. I had to use her to get at least a glimpse of what was going on in that room. I was scared that whatever we were to find there was going to change my sister's relationship with Jessica. A part of me wanted to just leave everything as it is and trust my soon-to-be wife, but I wanted to ease my consciousness and curiosity, my emotions were high and I didn't know how to control them. I wanted to get inside once and for all but at the same time, my conscience was telling me to confront her about it after our wedding. A few moments later my sister showed up and asked what I was doing at a hotel when I was supposed to be at the party. So I told her that I was waiting for Jessica, she was finishing up some filming projects, but she had been in the room for too long. I asked for her help to speak to the reception lady to let us and just to make sure she was still okay. As expected my sister didn't believe my lie. We went to the reception lady, she introduced herself as Jessica's sister, and introduced me as her fiancé. She asked the lady if we could get access into the room that she was in. The lady tried telling my sister that the person we were looking for was busy, so we pleaded with her until she gave in. My sister's questioning look made me uncomfortable, but I cared less. All I wanted was to get access into that room and see what was going on then maybe I would have been at ease knowing the truth. The reception lady asked one of the hotel keepers to show us where Jessica was. My sister knocked on the door and we waited for someone to open at least, but no one did. We kept on knocking until my sister suspected that something might be wrong with Jess so she asked the hotel keeper to open for us because there was no way someone was not going to hear the knocks. The hotel keeper then went to the reception lady and asked if the room number she gave us was the correct one of which she confirmed that it was the room that Jessica was in. When the hotel keeper opened, I was the first one to get in. What I saw almost gave me a heart attack. I never thought I would ever witness my fiancé doing such things especially to another man looking like a possessed demon. I didn't care about my sister's presence, tears clouded my eyes. I couldn't believe what I had seen. It was heartbreaking to see my fiancé having such a sexual play with another man. It seemed as if I was looking at a hooker or a stripper. Seeing my woman taking charge of a sexual act with a man two times older than her. It was a very disgusting thing to watch, she looked pretty high. I couldn't recognize the person I was seeing. I asked myself who she was because that was not my fiancé. I walked out trying to digest what I saw. My sister came to me disappointed and shocked, she asked why I lied, and if what we saw inside the room was still a project, I told her about. I didn't know what to tell my sister. My tongue was tied, I couldn't answer her, and the only thing that rang in my mind was fun and the grunts of that old man. My sister called the cops because the man was old and Jess was out of it. She was disappointed, she had accepted Jessica not only as my girl but as a little sister. I on the other hand I was more shuddered than angry. I thought it was all a dream and someone would wake me up and tell me that it was a nightmare. She was so innocent or must I say she looked innocent but she fooled me. It angered me, she had masked her troubles and resorted to drugs and old men. I thought we shared everything from our weaknesses to our strengths including our sexual desires. She made me believe that she was going to her bachelorette party that was hosted by her friend, knowing very well that she wanted her friend to cover up for her so she can do her abominable act. To think that I was ready to start a family with Jessica. The following day was supposed to be about us as we were going to be officially Mr. and Mrs. Washington. They say men don't cry, but I cried. I regretted getting into that room but I was relieved that I had uncovered the truth. I found the truth about the meaning of fun the old man Peter was talking about. I couldn't leave her there alone while I saw how high she was on drugs. I didn't know that my fiancé was on drugs. Was I that ignorant to a point that I couldn't even see the changes in my fiancé's life? I blamed myself for the way she was. Maybe I was too pushy, so she resorted to drugs. She had started going out a lot, lying about her whereabouts. The red flags were there. 
All I wanted was for her to be open in our relationship, she should have told me what she was going through instead of taking drugs and sleeping with old men. My sister told me that we had to rush her to the hospital because she was having a seizure. Two days after she got discharged, we tried talking about what went on. After weeks of trying to fix our relationship I decided to call it quits. I couldn't trust her anymore. After Jessica I never got into any relationship till today. I hated her but hated myself more. Did I make the right decision to give up on her? Any advice?